Hey guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, and I have some fun videos for you. Today, I have seen this video. I think all of my favorite YouTubers have done this video at one point or another. This is going to be my picks for what I think anyone's first designer bag should be. If you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos, so make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. So let's get in to this topic. For my college graduation, I bought myself my first kind of big girl personal purchase of a designer bag. I got the Givenchy mini Pandora bag. It was everywhere. Kim Kardashian lived around the corner from me in New York and I would occasionally possibly see a paparazzi shot of her wearing that bag. I was obsessed. I wore that bag until it literally fell off my body and there are such good options. So I'm gonna give you my kind of spin on things maybe add a vintage one in there because of all the amazing vintage and pre-loved resale market apps, in-person stores that are now everywhere. I can't wait to hear all of your thoughts. So first, might surprise you guys, but I am adding some on here that I've owned because I truly, truly stand behind them. So you might be surprised, but the Gucci Dionysus bag, I loved that bag. I bought myself, that. it actually was one of the only still to this day full priced items I bought in store at the Gucci at Saks probably about actually five years ago exactly this spring. So I had what I guess is technically, it might be called the mini size, it might be called the small, the smallest everyday size. There is like a little nano evening size, but I'm talking like the everyday size, this and the size up from it. Perfect first designer bags. This bag was like indestructible. I literally wore it everywhere. I wore it on my vacations. It was rainproof. It was such an amazing bag. I never once doubled up the handle and wore it as a shoulder bag just because Shoulder bags are kind of hard for me. Crossbody, I felt really secure. Nobody was gonna try to like take it off of me somehow. The lock was really secure. Honestly, if you're not a logo person, they have it in some very kind of cool, just more muted leathers. Go with classic black if you want. And an amazing thing is that especially in the last year or so, on Vestier in particular. These bags are so affordable. I sold mine, oh, I sold mine a little while ago. I was sad to part with it, but I knew mine was the one with logos on it and it just wasn't as much my vibe anymore. It went to a very, very good home. And now these bags are available for like a thousand dollars, even the kind of spruced up ones. Absolute perfect first bag pick. You're gonna be sick of me, but a vintage Chanel bag, Perfect first designer bag, especially if, you know, if you were considering a classic flap for one of your first bags. And if you're lucky enough to have just 10 grand for your first bag, go for it. By all means, I am envious of you, but that, that newest price increase just really did us all in. Vintage Chanel, I think, is such honestly a better way to go. It's like the camera bag that I have that I just showed you. I think that these vintage Chanel pieces are timeless, classic. You still get that vibe. I've worn mine truly so much and I will never part with it. Chanel vintage, perfect. A like staple, staple bag, quite frankly, what I, if I were, 20 or 22, graduating college, buying my first designer bag, and let's say it's 2023, I would probably go for a Loewe puzzle bag. This bag looks so perfect. It has everything that I kind of need. Crossbody, it seems really secure. And then you can take the crossbody strap off, wear it with the top handle. 
the mini, the small, the medium. There are so many size options, so many really cool color options. There are mismatch color options where there's kind of like the color blocking. There are so many on the pre-loved market, and if you want to go buy one in a store, oh my gosh, that's just a perfect first designer bag. And two bags that, you know, I've been teetering with. Alyssa Lenore has, I think, a couple or maybe has had a couple. The Dior Bobby and the Dior 30 Montaigne. I'm cheating a little bit. These both seem so amazing. Again, you're kind of getting that, you're jumping right into the deep end by getting a Dior bag. If this is your first designer bag, either of these seem so lovely, so perfect. With this list, I really thought very hard about each one of these items. And for your first bag, you kind of want something that you're not gonna be so terrified of, it's scratching or anything. So you want them to be hardy. You want them to be good for every day. You want them to not be like nano, tiny, mini bags. But you also, as a first designer bag, really do want them to be transitional so that you can wear it to work, you can wear it on the weekends, and you can wear it out to a nice dinner. The Bobby bag in particular, I do really, really love. It's a vintage style that's been kind of reworked. Anything with a vintage reference, we know I have a soft spot for. And again, one that has been, <laughs> oh, I'm terrible, has been teetering on my own list. I love Kierna Zabet if you are in New York City and Soho in particular. Kierna Zabet is a great, really cool contemporary multi-brand store. I tried on the Bottega Loop camera bag, particularly the one with the little gold details on like, either side of the bag oh my god what a cool first bag pick because if you're kind of more minimal you love the Bottega vibes and you don't want to go for some one of kind of the you know one of the main houses like Chanel, Hermes, Louis Vuitton. Bottega is the coolest option we know I love I'm obsessed and the loop bag seems so amazing ticks off all those things that I just talked about not surprising because I never <laughs> I never talk about Saint Laurent I okay so clothing love we've already gone over this I wouldn't be able to fit into any Saint Laurent clothing pieces I have been obsessed the last two years in particular with like, oh my god, the runway looks, are we dying? Bags on the other hand, I'm, I don't know, I would like to be convinced of them. I'm not sure that, you know, the quality is like the best, 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 best. However, I think that they're really, really lovely. And I was surprised by this one. I think it's pronounced the YSL Le Maillon or Le Maillon. Sorry, my French is terrible. This bag is so good. I am not a Saint Laurent girl. However, I really tried to give you guys one of each and some variety. I looked at all the main houses. This is beautiful. I love that it's not the YSL logo and it's just like a really sweet kind of I don't know how to describe it, almost loop, almost infinity looking sign logo. Just seems classic, just seems perfect. If you want a more minimal, not obvious pick, this is perfect. And this one, we just, you know, we, we realize that I'm obsessed with everything that I've picked. Kate, we've been loving. I still am looking at the August hobo. There's a new girl in town. <laughs> the Kate Alyssa bag. I saw one in person at the Kate store. Go if you haven't. Kate, whew, they're amazing. I'm clearly a huge fan. This bag is clearly the August's little sister. It's so cool. It looks like it can go crossbody. It's kind of that like almost banana shape, almost croissant shape, but the patent leather is so cool. The tones are so cool. There's another version that's shorter, so you can't do it cross body. It looks more evening vibes. We know Kate does evening bags so well. What more could you ask for for a first designer bag pick? Kate is on the rise. Kate has been on the rise. She's been so amazing, and like this is the coolest pick. And another one that, I don't know, I've never, 
Brands like Saint Laurent, Prada, Dior, and Fendi. I I want to love more, and I'm just very picky. But I've been actually loving the Fendi Peekaboo, specifically the mini first edition style. The new style is really cool. They kind of like cut it a little bit at the top. The original ones were a little bit more of like a seamless, softer rectangle. And I believed they turned the stitching inside out. So the new ones are stitched on the outside. The old ones were stitched on the inside. Celia versus Retourne, if we're talking Hermes styles. Caleb Snell, you have made me love Fendi Peekaboos. I know he has like four possibly of the large or the extra large. I went to Rebag in person. I saw most of the sizes because they're so amazing. They have so many out. The mini is kind of gorgeous. At the Real Real, I think it's sold, but there was one in snake skin. Again, I'm not a Fendi Peekaboo girl, but when I went in person, I like picked it up and I was like, oh, wait, am I being turned right now? What's going on? Fendi Peekaboo Mini has compartments for you. It could transition really well. The crossbody strap is actually crossbody strap length appropriate. It's so cool with just the top handle as well. That could be like perfect, perfect, perfect pick. Well, that is my list. We've gone obviously a little bit more minimal, but for a first designer bag, if you want to go off and buy a purple tie-dye, exotic, crazy something, go forth. This is just my weird little nerdy, minimalistic <laughs> first bag pick that I think could be super, super versatile and stay with you for your entirety of your collecting life. I can't wait to hear your thoughts as always. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. Can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.